Let me go across first uh, to you, Mr. Thakur. I think what parents, what everybody wants to know, because these are children who have died, are these uh, cough syrups available in India presently? Um, I do not know. I, I mean, the ministry has put out a very uh, confusingly worded letter saying that they haven't given permission to uh, for this company to, to, to sell in India. That doesn't actually answer the question because, no. you know, if you have permission to manufacture, uh, you have permission to sell in India. Um, I think the ministry should categorically come out and say whether they actually have um, given permission for this company to market these, these drug, uh, drug cops in India. I do not know. Okay. Second question again to you, uh, 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 Dinesh Thakur, is this, and we need to talk about this. What is diethylene glycol and what is ethylene glycol? Basic question. Let's break down yeah. the science first. Sure. So when you make medicine, right, how does it take the form of, for example, a tablet? How does it take the form of a capsule? Some medicines have to be administered as syrups, um, especially for young children who cannot swallow a capsular tablet. You have to make it in liquid form so that you can administer them easily, right? Yes. How do you get the consistency in that syrup, right? So what these are, what are called excipients, these are things that are inert, that allow, you know, drug manufacturers to formulate their medicine in a way that they can be administered. Most medicine, you know, most chemicals are very, very uh, tart or tasting. How do you make them taste like a sweet cherry so that you can give it to kids while well, you add a sweetener? How do you make it look like, you know, an appetizing liquid that kids want to consume? You add a colorant to it. These are all called excipients. Ethylene glycol is one of those. Now, the point here is that, you know, this is not the first time this has happened in our country. This is the fifth time that we're seeing um, in India. No, this is Gambia. Uh, we had one two years ago where a similar... In fact, was hold that thought. I want to bring up that sure. graphic. Let's list the number of cases uh, where this yes. has come up uh, in India. And I've taken this data from your book as well. So let's bring up that graphic on... Sure. Um, Drug poisoning incidents in India. Let's bring that up. Drug poisoning incidents in India, because the point we want to make uh, on this program right now is that there have been at least five major drug poisoning incidents in India. Let's bring that graphic up, please. Uh, the first one in 1972 in Chennai, 15 children died after consuming a cough syrup. The cough syrup was adulterated with diethylene glycol. Okay. 1986, Mumbai. 14 patients died after consuming adulterated glycerine. Glycerine has been adulterated with diethylene glycol. In 1988, 11 patients killed, again, poisoning as a result of diethylene glycol. In 1990, uh, that was 1988, 1998, Gurgaon, 33 children aged 2 and 6 years killed. The cough syrup was found adulterated with, again, diethylene glycol. 2019, Jammu, nine children died due to an adulterated cough syrup. This is all from their book, uh, The Truth Pill. And before I come back to you, I want to talk a little bit more about DEG, as it's known, diethylene glycol, because, uh, you know, we need to inform people. Let's have that graphic up on what is diethylene glycol. Uh, what is diethylene glycol? It is a powerful industrial solvent used to make brake fluid or used in brake fluid, it never is used in the manufacture of medicine. It shouldn't be. Why? Because it is fatal if consumed by humans. It causes kidneys to fail that can eventually lead to death. All right. So that's what I've got from the book as well. Um, let me go across to Prashant Reddy. You know, Mr. Reddy, um, what the government says now, what government sources say, because these are unnamed, and that's deeply problematic by itself, unnamed sources, keeping that aside for a moment, government sources say this drug should have been trialed in Gambia. Why are you necessarily blaming only us? Is that answer remotely tenable? That is absolutely not true. When, when drugs are manufactured in India, they're presumed to have been manufactured in regulated facilities by the Indian government. And when they are exported, there is absolutely no requirement. Most countries will not test the drugs prior to use. Having said that, there is a practice within government agencies in India because they have no trust in the regulatory process, wherein they do test some batches 
now and then, but even that is not done consistently. But internationally speaking, once a drug comes from one country to another country, there is no practice of testing the drug for quality. It's presumed sure that, that the national regulator of the exporting country has done a good enough job to ensure that the drug is safe.